Guess who's back? Back again. Boiler's back. I don't have friends. <laughs> oh, wow. We're starting to cringe off early today. That's what we're doing. Hey, what's up? Uh, we are bringing back this series. Now, I know you guys love this series. I just don't have time to do it all the time, but uh, actually, you guys might be getting it more often because guess what? Your boy got an editor. Yeah, no, my boy Zachary, uh, he's a good friend of mine, really good at videography, and he was kind of curious as to uh, how to kind of hone his craft a little bit more, so I offered him this, and he seemed interested, so uh, here we are, so Zach, feel free to say hello to the audience. So I'm back at college. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right, uh, we're doing the college dorm setup one more time. Oh gosh, I hate this setup so much, there's like zero room. I also have zero lighting equipment, it's literally, I just have both of my screens right here on like full brightness <laughs> which I'm sure you could tell in my glasses which normally I prefer to have my glasses off but I need to read a script for this one because I can't see Jack without him so I know you guys love this series so much so I decided let's bring it back with a uh... we're gonna be building one of my favorite accelerators of all time drift tech now, I am super, super pumped for this build because I get so much more creative freedom in this one than usual due to the fact that this one wasn't in the movies. It just showed up as a toy and on the trading cards. So really, we're focusing on the body. I'm taking a few liberties with the interior. Really, all we really know is the exterior. The engine we know a teensy bit about, but uh, what are you gonna do, right? Now, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, yeah, no, that's about it. Social media links below, also a Patreon and a t-shirt store. Give me money, please. Now I gotta pay an editor. <laughs> because honestly, now it's starting to be uh, a two-person team for this, so any money would seriously help. However, now that we're done focusing on that, let's focus on what we do know about Drift Tech. To put it simply, Drift Tech is the Teco team's rally fighter with a 400 horsepower twin transverse engine, which oddly enough is used in motorcycles, 22 inch rims, an air to water intercooler, and drive by wire engine synchronization, which is really just a fancy way of saying uh, the engine doesn't use a throttle cable, it uses a wire, which pretty much every car in the last 20 years has used. <laughs> Also want to make a point that this series is in for a little bit of a change, as I've realized that most of the viewers don't actually want a dirt cheap car to make this all work, they'd much rather have an expensive car that kind of looks like it. So that's kind of what we're going to focus on, just a tad. So starting with Drift Tech, uh, cars are not required to be cheap, they're just based on the model that's closest to how they look. Now the funny thing about Drift Tech is that originally there was only one car that I thought would fit, and that was the ever so expensive Lamborghini Urus. While there are a lot of differences from the stock form, it has roughly the same silhouette as Drift Tech. Heck, a while back, me and JC Squared actually were playing Forza and building all the Accelerators cars, and we actually found a way to make the Urus look pretty close. However, even with a fancy body kit or, or spoiler, it really just has that silhouette. That's it, nothing else going for it. But I know that that's not nearly good enough for y'all. We need to go deeper. I'm an idiot. <laughs> As I poured and poured and poured over different lists of cars and all that, I wasn't any closer to finding one than when I started. Yeah, Drift Tech looks just like Power Rage, but they didn't make a bigger Nissan 350Z like how I chose for that video. So I got bored and wasted some time on the internet until I got a certain recommended video on YouTube. I don't even remember the title, but I saw a car that, while a four-door, actually has a similar silhouette and just look about it to Drift Tech. That's right, the brand new 2022 Subaru WRX. Now, I know what you're gonna say. Spoilers, the car isn't out yet. Spoilers, why are you basing it off a car that doesn't exist? I get it, the car isn't officially released. However, what we do have are spy shots and overeager fans. The spy shots actually show off what it could look like pretty well. And of course, fans have created very realistic artistic interpretations of what it could look like. And, as far as aftermarket parts go, it's fair to say that companies that made body parts for the 2021 will also make parts for the 2022. So they are just used as a price point. Now I know what you may be thinking, why the heck is this guy picking a tuner car for a vehicle that's based off a rally fighter? Well, I'll tell you why. Body-wise, the new WRX has all the basic body traits Drift Tech has. It's got the triangular headlights, the iconic rear spoiler, minus the two extra doors, it's a great model to start with. And while prices aren't set for sure, you can expect to pay between $30,000 to $40,000. So, to call it even, we'll say this car is going to cost us $35K. Alright, so now it's time to start off with the modifications. We're going to start off with the front grille. Now, the bottom grille in the 2022 looks pretty close to my honest opinion to Drift Tech. However, the front grille needs some work. 
Luckily, I found a pretty decent grill on Carid for the retail price of $340. Now, don't get me wrong, the grill is not perfect by any means, but besides fabricating your own parts, I think that's the closest we're gonna be able to get. And besides, even though fabrication is needed for a lot of these, I try to not talk about fabrication as much because that price could be literally anything, and what's the point of a video if I'm giving you random prices? Next up is the rear window. Now, this is without a doubt the most difficult looking part of the car. Luckily though, it's not so different that it's impossible to recreate. All you need here are some window louvers. Unfortunately, they for some reason don't make any for the WRX body, which is kind of weird. I mean, I saw a picture of some custom ones and they look sick. So unfortunately here, we're gonna have to either fabricate your own or have a custom shop make some. Now prices will fluctuate, but you can expect to spend around 500 bucks without paint. But what do we do about that awesome scoop that goes over the windshield? Well, with the WRX's longer body, it's just not going to look the same. Sure, you could just put a hood scoop in there, paint it, and call it a day, but that just won't look as good. Well, boys and girls, it's time to buckle up, because we got to take a trip to the body shop. Now, I have no idea what this would cost, to be perfectly honest, but once again, I'm going to go with a safe guess and say, after painting, welding, and building, you're going to be looking at roughly 1500 in labor and parts. Personally, though, it's not that important to me, so if I were you, I'd just leave it. Now, let's look at the exhaust. On Drift Tech, the exhaust, much like Power Rage, comes out of the sides. Well, lucky for us, we're going to be using the exact same ones, a Jones Exhaust PCAM214SS for roughly $400. Now, before we get to paint, there is one more thing we have to do. One more thing. It's going to be very, very hard for me to, to get through. I'm so sorry to this beautiful car. I do another prayer to the car gods, but I don't have my green screen. Dear car gods, I ask only for forgiveness of what I'm about to do to this poor- WRS. I'm aware of the sin I'm committing by tearing apart this car that did so much, not only for horsepower, but for- Japanese. And pride in general. With this- <laughs> I can't stop laughing. With this build, we solemnly swear to make- Subaru. Proud. In gasoline we trust. Obviously, Drift Tech is a tad higher than the WRX. It's probably got a good 5 to 6 inch lift, however we can't tell the scale due to the fact that we've never seen a character stand next to it. Now, while lift kits are super common, most lift kits are made for trucks, not a WRX, and at least not that high. Now, a typical lift kit will run you around $1.3,000, however, since there will need some fabrication and extra labor, that price could easily skyrocket to $2.5,000, which is what I'm going to say for this video. That wasn't even the hard part, here's the hard part. Now. I know that the wiki says Drift Tech is supposed to have 22 inch tires, but look at them. Those are not 22 inches. Those are way bigger than 22 inches. Unless Drift Tech is like freakishly small, like a little buggy. And so that's just weird. Those are definitely 28 to 32 inch rims instead. Which means the old rims that we'd buy for the Teku car just won't do. Instead, we're gonna have to buy some. Uh, we're gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna oh, <laughs> They started off as fake gags, but turned into real ones. Ugh. We're gonna need to buy some, some, some donks. There, I said it. Are you happy? I buying donks. <laughs> Gosh, that just made me feel dirty. I decided to buy some 28-inch U255 wheels. Now these are off eBay, so these will cost around $2,500 used and most likely $3,500 plus brand new. At tires, as well as cutting the body and repainting, and you're looking at a hefty $6,000 sum. Okay, now that I'm through with the worst part, let's get through the fun part, the paint. Luckily for us, the paint Subaru uses is actually pretty similar to the one on Drift Tech, though it may be a shade lighter than on the toy. Now, I go over paint in every other Dream Rides video, uh, feel free to check those out if you want the specifics. But for this video, I think because it's so close, I'm going to add some decals over the stock paint. Now, decals as big as this are expensive because they got to create them in a computer, they got to put them on a wrap, they got to do all that kind of jazz. So expect to pay around $2,000 high end for them to be created and installed. Now just add some underglow for 60 bucks and we are set for the low, low price of $48,300. Real strong start, really expensive start. Uh, by the way, the Lamborghini Urus I talked about earlier, uh, just buy the same wheels, same stuff, and you're pretty much good. Now, that super hefty sum actually kind of hurt me, so let's move on to something a little bit easier, the interior. Which we can make as cheaply as possible because we don't know what we're doing. Because we don't know what it looks like. That lasted way too long. 
I'm serious, it's never appeared in a movie with no clue what the interior looks like. Even on the toy, without taking it apart, it's really hard to tell, and under the glass, it's just a regular couple of seats and a wheel and stick shift. So, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and assume it's pretty close to stock, because who cares at this point? If you want to buy some cheapy blue seats, by all means, go ahead, but I think we can make the regular interior work with a very simple mod. This mod is the LED wire strips all over. What we're going to do is we're going to put some LED wire strips all over that son of a gun's interior. Now, I know it seems cheap, but if you look at those pictures that have just the blue in there, it actually adds a lot and really tekuizes. Eh, see what I did there? The vehicle. And by the time you're done, expect to spend eh, around 100 bucks tops. Now let's move to the part which I usually love, the, uh, the engine. Keyword usually, because this is a really weird one. <laughs> because for some reason, Driftex motor is a motorcycle engine. What we really know is it's a twin transverse turbocharged motor, and that's about it. On the Accelerators wiki, it doesn't specify, but on the Hot Wheels wiki, it claims it's four cylinders, which I honestly don't know where they got that, because I looked over cards, I looked over the Meet the Car section, I couldn't find anything about four cylinders. So here's what I came up with. The, uh, the motorcycle engine that I felt fit the bill the best, and probably the most expensive, was the 200 horsepower engine coming out of a Kawasaki Ninja ZX-10RR. Making roughly 200 horsepower, so both of them together, 400. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find the engine for sale separately, so you're gonna have to buy the whole bike twice, which is more expensive than the whole car, coming in at $29,000. Yeah, like I said, just just keep the stock motor. It's not worth it at all. The the stock motor is gonna most likely make 400 horsepower already, so don't waste your time with this. I'm just doing this for the sake of entertainment. Now you find a way to hook it all up and together, add a turbocharged kit for three thousand dollars because you need that hour to water intercooler, and you have it. The most expensive engine known to man that makes the least amount of horsepower. <laughs> now let's throw it all together. At the base exterior build, you are looking at a hefty $48,300. Add the interior in, and you're looking at $48,400. And the super, ultimate, extremely pointless build altogether costs $109,400, and if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the most expensive car we've had yet. Completely pointless, too. <laughs> So that about wraps things up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm hoping to maybe bring this series back like eh, every couple months or so. Keep checking my YouTube page because I'll definitely occasionally have like a, what's it called? A voting poll to see which car we do next. And who knows? Maybe it could be a real fun one next time. So uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Please feel free to donate, especially now that we're a team of two. We're both uh, working full time and going to school full time. So, or just buy a t-shirt. That's fun too. So uh, yeah, that wraps things up. I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.